In this video, I will be showing you how to animate a character's movement in Unity. I'll be making use of three assets to illustrate how this can be done. Whilst this tutorial will apply to any character controller, even your own custom one, the first asset is the Kinematic Character Controller, which is a free and incredibly powerful character controller which you can find on the Unity Asset Store. Secondly, the Sinti Sci-Fi Pack for the character and scene, which you can find an affiliate link to in the description below. Making use of those helps my channel out loads, so thanks to those of you who do. You can of course use any other character on the store, provided it supports Unity's humanoid animations. Finally, I'll be using Omni Animation for all the animations. Omni Animation makes use of AI to generate great looking animations, but you can also use Mixamo or any of the animation packs available on the store, or if you really want, you can create your own animations using Blender or any other animation software. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the character controller. You can find details on how to do this in the kinematic character controller documentation, which is pretty easy to follow, but here's a quick summary. And if you want a more detailed tutorial on this, let me know in the comments and I can make that happen. The first thing I'll do is open up the demo scene from the Sinti sci-fi pack and drag in the example character and camera from the kinematic character controller. Then I'll remove the capsule from the example character and drag in this android character from the Sinti sci-fi pack. I'll just assign the character model to the mesh root property of the example character controller and then I'll create an empty game object, call it player, add the example player component to it and drag in the camera and character controller. Now if I hit the play button, I can move the character around with the keyboard and look around using the mouse. Onto the animation setup. Firstly, you want to make sure the character you're using is set up as a humanoid by clicking the FBX and going to the Rig tab and setting the animation type to humanoid. Doing this allows you to use Unity's avatar system to retarget any external animations you download to your character. The avatar system is awesome and it lets you swap out animations so easily. From Omni Animation, I'm going to download a few animations for Idle and Walk. It's important to note that you don't need to download the character model, simply downloading the animation rig is all you need. The the animation rig is just the character's bones. Omni Animation provides you with an animation rig that you can use to set up all the animations you download. So instead of generating a new humanoid avatar for each animation you download, you just assign the Omni Animation rig and everything is set up. If you're using Mixamo animations, you can also generate a single humanoid avatar from one of the downloads and then reuse it for each animation you download thereafter. Taking a closer look at the animations I've downloaded, firstly I'll copy the already generated animation rig to each animation by going to the FBX Rig tab and selecting Rig Type Humanoid, then in Avatar Definition selecting Copy from Other Model and assigning the Omni Animation Avatar. I also want to make sure that all the animations are set to loop so they continuously play when we're performing any of the animation steps. With all of our animations downloaded and ready, I'm going to create an animation controller. In the animation controller, I'm going to create a float parameter for the forward movement. In my character controller, I'm going to need to get a reference to the animator so that I can update this float value and use it to animate our character. I'll add a field for the animator to the top of my character controller class and add the serialize field attribute so that I can assign it manually. Then in the update velocity method of my character controller, I'll need to calculate a value for the current forward speed of the character. If you're using a custom character controller, you'll do this in the update method once you've applied any changes to your character's velocity. To calculate the speed in a given direction, we can use the dot product of the character's current velocity and the direction we're looking for. So in the case of the forward speed, we can use vector 3 dot current velocity and the character's forward vector. This gives us a float whose value will be positive when moving forward and negative when moving backward. Now we just need to pass this value into the animation controller. To do that we can use the reference we got to our animator earlier and use the set float function to set the forward parameter like so. We'll need to make sure our character has an animator component with root motion turned off and that the animation controller that we created earlier is assigned to it. Then we'll need to drag the animator component into our character controller object. Now we're all set up to start controlling our animations in the animation controller. We're going to use a blend tree so that we can blend from our idle to our walking animation. For locomotion, this is way better than using state switching because the animation transitions look much smoother, especially when incorporating turn animations. 
Blends. We'll right click in the animator and go to Create State from New Blend Tree. We'll rename it to Motion. Double click it to make changes to it and set the blend type to 1D. We'll click the plus button to add three motion fields. The forward parameter we set up earlier will be used to blend between each of these based on a threshold. We'll set the thresholds to negative 1, 0 and 1. I use the value 1 because that is the current max speed of my character. Then we'll drag in the walk animation to the motion fields whose values are 1 and negative 1 and drag the idle animation into the motion field whose threshold value is 0. In the motion field with a threshold value of negative 1, change the animation speed to negative 1 so that the character plays the walking animation backwards when its speed is negative. Now we can hit the play button and see the animations in action. There might be a bit of sliding going on which is something that can be addressed by using root motion animations. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing how to set root motion animations up. I'm going to try my best to do tutorial Tuesdays as often as I can so let me know in the comments if there are any other tutorials you'd like to see and if if you're having trouble setting things up, come join our Discord server and we can chat about it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.